Hi, this is Rich McHugh, and I'm going to just talk a little bit about the struggle I had to find good local data about uh, COVID spread in my part of the world, which is Victoria, BC, in British Columbia. I could find a lot of good international data and data at the provincial level, which isn't really helpful for me because, well, of course, we live in British Columbia. We live on an island, which uh, gives us a little bit more separation from the rest of the province. So initially, I, like I said, I couldn't find any data on Victoria, BC, but I could find data on British Columbia. So from publicly available websites, I think mostly US-based uh, initially, I started pulling data and calculating the infection rate, uh, death rates, and I had the population level so I could figure out those rates based on number of, uh, numbers of infection and numbers of death. And I did this up until, let's see, April 6th was the last day I did that. And it's, I stopped then because I was able to find some dashboard information that gave me this information without calculating it on my own. Eventually, the government of British Columbia set up a COVID uh, dashboard visualization for the province. This is what it looks like here. And again, they give you a distribution by age. They have different locations around the province. So this is for the whole province. Uh, so on Friday, the, there were 737 new cases and there are 5,200 active cases in the province. And if we click on, for example, Fraser Valley, looks like most of the new cases were in Fraser Valley and Vancouver Island, there were only 32 cases. Uh, but as you can see by this graph here, over time, that's actually quite a bit higher than it used to be, even though it's still relatively low compared to other places in the province. And here it tells us, so this is new cases by uh, location or region, and here is total number of active cases. And this is actually what I've been looking for. Although again, Vancouver Island, as you can see here, is quite large, so it would be nice to know how many of those cases were in Victoria. Eventually, I stumbled across this PDF file that's published week on weekdays by the local health authority on Vancouver Island, and it breaks down the cases based on three parts of the island. So there's southern Vancouver Island, which is basically greater Victoria, central Vancouver Island, and northern Vancouver Island. So I can see here there are 83 cases in Victoria. Uh, which is helpful, but even more helpful would be a per capita uh, number. So I, you know, 83 is, again, really not that high, relatively speaking, uh, but it's uh, higher than it was. So eventually, actually, I'll show you one more thing before I get to my favorite visualization. Here's another one that shows how Canadian provinces rank compared against American states. And they have average daily new cases per million. So New Jersey and New York are number one and number two at the moment. Florida, where one of my daughters is living, is number 11 at 208. And then we'll scroll down. Saskatchewan's 113. Oh. British Columbia is 94, which is relatively good. Uh, compared to U.S. states anyways, and then Hawaii 52, and then you got Yukon and Northwest Territories that are at zero. Anyways, but that gives you a good relative feel for how things are currently going. You notice B.C. has a very flat, flat curve compared to like Arkansas, New Mexico, and U.S. states, even compared to other Canadian provinces like Quebec and Manitoba. Um, we have been quite flat, but uh, yeah, anyways, interesting. Now, this is the visualization that I've settled on as my favorite one and the most useful one. And this is an interactive visualization tool that allows you to select which jurisdictions you'd like to uh, compare. So we can do it by province here. Um, so I've selected British Columbia, Alberta, and Ontario. I've selected two countries, China and the USA, but you can select any country in the world. You can't do states, so I couldn't do Washington State using this particular tool, but 
I can do China, USA, and you can also select health authorities. Um, so the island health would be the whole island. Again, that's not as interesting to me as delivery areas. And if we scroll down here, there's central, northern, and southern Vancouver Island. So that is interesting. And this gives us uh, daily new cases and death rates. Um, really, I'm interested in the new cases to know how things are going. Where I'm at, this is starting in March all the way to present. And you can see that the Vancouver Island Health Authorities are way down here. It's really hard to see them. So I'm going to narrow the date range so I can see a little bit better what's going on. I'm going to go all the way to February 1st. There we go. So we can see USA up here, British Columbia, Ontario, Alberta, all sort of clustered together around uh, 10 new cases per 100,000. Uh, and that's a seven day moving average. And then down here we've got Vancouver, Central Vancouver Island, Northern Vancouver Island, and then Southern Vancouver Island's around three. So actually that's pretty good. China's approaching zero by the look of things, which is great for China. I'm going to narrow this a bit further just so we can see a little bit better. So there's USA again. There we can break out the different parts of that. And so we're doing better currently on Southern Vancouver Island than Northern or Central. Not as good as China, uh, Australia, New Zealand, of course, but still pretty good. Anyways, this is helpful for me because I can see what direction the, uh, the infection rate is going and what level we're at here on the... So here's the new cases per 100,000 for the province and then for the island. Vancouver, South Vancouver Island is down. So you can see we've stayed relatively low while other places have gone high. Fingers crossed we'll stay that way. Anyways, this is my favorite tool. I'll put links to all these just after this video in case you're interested in playing around with them. And in my opinion, this is one of the most useful educational COVID tools for people living on in British Columbia and specifically on southern Vancouver Island. Anyways, I hope that you find this helpful.